What's going on, YouTube? It's your friend, Little Jerk. I'm here to put in that work and hit you guys with another. So, basically, my boy hit me up. He was like, yo, he want to do a little, not, not, not so much a podcast, but he want to do like a radio show. Like, you know, you know, you know, Hot 97, 105.1, all that. You know, you, they talk, had music playing, you know, you know, vibe and all that. I'm trying to do that, but the way he had it set up was, was a little, you know, shaky. So, he was acting if, you know, could help him figure out some way to get it done. I told him I'd look into it for him. So I was scouring the internet, I found a program, learned it a little bit. I'm making this story for him, but I figured if it can help somebody else out, why not? Without further ado, let's jump right into it. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is go over to this website, mix.org. That's M-I-X-X-X dot org. I will leave the website in the description box below. You're gonna hit this orange download button. Then you're gonna hit this orange download mix 2.2.4 button. It's gonna bring you down to the stable version. You're gonna choose whichever operating system you're using, whether it's Windows, Mac, Ubuntu, Fedora. I'm using Windows 10, so this is what I'm gonna click, 64-bit. You can click on the button. It's gonna pop up the download for you. You're gonna download it wherever you'd like. I would suggest just download it to the desktop if it makes it simpler for you. I already have it downloaded, so I'm not gonna do it again. You guys go ahead and download it and I'll catch you once that's done. Okay, so now that you have Mix installed, go ahead and just give it a double click. It's gonna pop up this window. You're gonna go ahead and click on install. You're gonna get the, do a lot of stuff to make changes. You're gonna hit yes. This window is gonna pop up, the welcome to Mix Setup Wizard. You're gonna hit next here. This is the end user license agreement. You're gonna hit I accept after you read it if you decide to, I'm reading shit, whatever. Next. This is the way it's gonna set up to be installed. By default, it's gonna have desktop shortcut with an X, meaning you will not get a desktop shortcut. If you do decide you want one, you can just click on that and click on will be installed on local hard drive or entire feature. It's the it's a shortcut, so either one is gonna do the same thing. It's gonna give you the shortcut. I don't want it on my desktop, so I'm gonna leave that X'd out. Hit next and then hit install. Once it's done running the installer, you're gonna click on finish. And then you're gonna either click on launch or close because I'm about to show you guys how to work it. I'm gonna hit launch. Now it's gonna make a pop up and it's gonna ask you what folder you'd like to use for your library directory. I'm gonna click cancel for right now. I'm not gonna select the folder. I'm gonna show you guys how to do this later. It also might give you a pop up saying no output devices. Again, I'm gonna just click continue. I will show you guys everything once we are inside of the program and it's up and running. Okay, now that the program has been installed and it's been opened, it's up and running. This is what the screen should look like. If your screen looks a little bit different, don't worry. I am going to show you how to get your screen to look exactly like mine. This way it'd be a little bit easier for you to follow along in the tutorial. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go up here and we're going to click on options and we're going to click on preferences. Now, once you launch the preferences, there's going to be a bunch of different tabs here. You do not need to worry about all of these. For this tutorial, we're only going to mess with four of them being sound hardware, library, interface and recording everything else we're going to leave at default the first thing i want to change is most likely going to be the sound api setting right now selected to asio but if you go down here to your output and input under master which is where you're going to hear all of your audio the tracks that you're playing as well as yourself when you're talking if i click this drop down it's not showing all of my different options for where i want my audio to be played through so if this is the same case for yourself in Sound API, you're going to click this drop down and you're going to switch it over to MME, which is more than likely what you're going to need to have selected in order to see all of your different options. Now, if I go down to master and I click the drop down, now you see I have all my options. I have my the headset and all of my different output sources. So I'm going to change this master one over to headset earphones because I'm not, I'm not going to bother having anything set for the headphones selection. I just going to only have it for the master. Next, we're going to Go over and click input. And the only thing I'm gonna add right now is the microphone. As I said, this is for if you know you're doing like a radio show, so you're gonna want to have your microphone, so you're talking, and you're gonna have the tracks that's playing. Simple setup, you don't need much else. So for my microphone, I'm gonna go ahead and click that, and I'm gonna add my blue snowball, that's the microphone I'm gonna be using. Next up, we're gonna go down to library. In the library, what you're gonna to wanna to change is if you want to add where you're gonna be pulling your tracks from. Now, if you're doing a weekly radio show you're going to want to possibly have the tracks ready beforehand if it's not live if it's you know something pre-recorded this way you already set up and you already know what tracks you're going to play and everything like that 
now what you're gonna do is you can click add and what I've done is I already made a new folder and in this folder I've already dragged some selected tracks in there just to have for the tutorial video so which I would suggest you do is make a folder name it radio show and whatever the date of that show you're gonna do this way you you know what you use when select folder and that's the only thing that you're gonna change here. Everything else, all these other settings here, you're gonna leave the same. Next up, you're gonna to go to interface. Now, the interface that I'm using is Dairy 64 samplers. You can use the different ones, late night. It just, as you see, it just basically changes the color and the way it looks, tango. I'm gonna leave mine on Dairy 64 sampler. All these other settings here, I do not change. They all stay the same. Waveforms, decks, equalizer, crossfader, effects, auto, DJ, live broadcasting, all stay the same. I did not touch anything in there. I would suggest you do the same until you, you know, you're ready to start experimenting with the program, learn the ins and outs, and, you know, really master the program. Next thing that we are going to mess with is going to be recording. Once you're on the recording tab, the output, I would say leave on lossless wave and not use mp3 i know everyone most likely knows mp3 and that's what they would probably choose but if you do export as mp3 you will lose some of your audio quality and it's much better to have it as a wave file that's basically the raw form this if you want to transfer it over to another editing program you can do so and you'll be editing in full quality and not have lost any bit of it bit def 16 bits you can leave it just like that now when you first get here Split recordings at is most likely going to be on four gigabytes, depending on if you're using Wave or MP3. If you're using MP3, four gigabytes should be fine. You can get a lot of time in four gigabytes, but if you're using Wave, the raw form, I would suggest you leave it at 120 minutes. You don't really want to use split recordings because that means that once your show is done and you have to then upload it, you have to go and find those different pieces and then combine them into one uniform track, and it's going to be extra work. Since most podcasts are typically 45 minutes to an hour, I would suggest, you know, leaving it at the 120 because it's going to capture the entire thing. Beat detection, key detection, and normalization, I'm going to leave the same for right now. I'm not going to touch any of that. So now that we're done in the preferences, I'm going to go ahead and click apply and then click OK. You'll get this pop-up once you finish. And it was basically saying that you added a directory. Let's go ahead and scan the directory and import all of those tracks that are in there. So what I'm gonna do is click scan, and as you see, it populated whatever tracks I had inside of the directory. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and go over the user interface. First, we're gonna go over this large area here, which is gonna be a track list. Obviously, any tracks that you put into that folder that we discussed prior, this is where they're gonna show up. There's some tabs over here on the side. Tracks, that's to show you track list, auto DJ, I'm not going to use that playlist crates computer instead of going ahead and having the tracks in a library and doing it this way you can also click on computer click the little arrow next to it and devices and then find your tracks this way it's a lot more work in my opinion and i feel like it's just better to go ahead and use the tracks tab recordings after you make you know you record a show this is where the populate history analyze and click itunes is going to pop up and you're going to be able to direct the program to your itunes folder i'm not using that so we're just going to stick here in tracks this rectangle area here as well as this one over here these are your decks this is where your tracks are going to be played so if i go ahead and grab this track here and i drag it and drop it you've just gone ahead and loaded this track to the deck and if you want to play it just click the play button right here. Okay, you should be able to hear the track playing. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it down just a little bit on this side. This slider while I'm here, this slider right here is your audio for your deck one. This slider is for your deck two, which will be on this side. I'm gonna go ahead and pause this. Now, if you wanna put a track on deck two, you can also drag one, drop it on deck two. Now you have a track load on both deck one and deck two. Now, as you can see, once I press play, and I pause that, there's a little orange check here now that says played that's so that you know during your show you know which tracks you've played already and which ones you haven't this way you don't play the same track multiple times as i said before these sliders here and here are to control the volume individually on the tracks this slider here is your crossfade slider and what this is for is to choose how much of a track is being heard by the audience so if i play both you're gonna hear both of them playing at the same time. We go to a part where it's beat. Bring this down. So as you see, both are playing and you know they're not in sync or anything, and it just sounds bad. 
So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna have the cross fader slider on one side. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag this over to the left. And as you see, the beat that was playing on the right side is no longer being heard because the fader is currently set to only be listening to deck one, which is this side. And vice versa, you wanna drag this over. You see, you start hearing it. And then now you're only hearing what's over here on deck two. If you want to bring the crossfader back to direct sensor, but you're not, you know, fairly sure where direct sensor is, you can just right click on the slider and it'll go right back to the default position, which is the centered. Next up, we have this slider here, as well as this slider over here. These are going to be your tempo slider, your speed control. It changes the, the speed at which the song is playing. So if I go ahead and press play and I raise it up, it's going to be, you know, more fast paced higher tempo vice versa if i bring it down it's definitely slowed down as if we're doing some chopping screwed whatever you right click it's going to bring it right back to the sensor position same with the crossfader now up here this right here is the beats per minute for the track this is the tempo of it this one this track here is at 7250 this track is at 10670 so if i as you bring this down, it's gonna as well bring down the number on the track. It can go down to about 98 beats per minute versus its standard 106. And we bring this one down, it's at 66 versus its standard 72.50. The next thing that we're gonna go over is your mic. As you can see, the mic is moving, but right here, this sensor column, this is your master volume. This is what everyone else hears. This is what your audience hears. If I press play on this track, you'll see that this slider here is for deck one. You see it's moving because something is being played. You see the master is moving because something is being played. If I stop this, they both go down to zero out. As you can see, this slide, this one right here is tracking that I'm talking, but it's not being transmitted over to the master control. What you're going to have to do is hit this talk button. And as you can see now, when I talk, it's going ahead and moving on the master. The problem that I, I personally don't like is that I hear myself and as of right now, I'm unsure of how to, you know, change that. So once I do figure out how to go ahead and change that, I will make a short tutorial how to, you know, get this done without hearing yourself, but also being able to hear both sides. All right, next up, the last thing that we're really going to use up here is going to be the record button. Once you hit this button, it's going to begin recording your mix as well as it's going to put a timer to let you know how long you've been recording for. So I'm gonna hit record just to show you right here. There's a little timer. You see how long you've been recording for. And if I hit record again, it'll obviously stop the recording. This button right here is for samplers. If you hit that, that little samplers tab right here will disappear. Now I'm gonna hit this little up and down arrow just to open it up. What this is, is you know, if you listen to radio, they have sound effects that will play. Like if you're from New York, you know Funk Master Flex has his bombs, he drops, things like that. So what I'm gonna do is gonna drag Benny in here. Just basically someone saying, Here comes Benny, drag and drop that. Okay, so I'm gonna play a track. Playing the beat, and then you go ahead and Here comes Benny! And that plays over the track. Okay, last but not least, I'm gonna go ahead and click this settings tab. What this does is gives you a little bit of different options you can mess with. The only thing I really want to show you guys in here at this point in time is the four decks. If you click this, it's going to swap out and now you'll have four decks instead of the two. Both decks one and three down here are going to be playing on the left side of the crossfader and decks two and four are going to be playing on the right side of the crossfader. All right, so now that I showed you guys how to use the program, where to find it, as well as a basic rundown of the interface and how everything works, I'm going to use the program myself and give you guys a little, you know, sample of how it's, it's used. Yo, what's going on people out in the airwaves? It's your boy DJ Friendly Jerk. I'm here to put in some work. And we, we're not even going to talk too much. We're going to jump right into it. Well, we, got some, we got some bangers lined up for today. So first off, we got this track by, by the boy Keon. Call that shit Dope. Let's, let's, let's get into it. You want to make sure that you mute your mic if you're not talking. And also while it's playing... It's Keon. Hey. Hey. Uh, these 
Go ahead and load up a track onto the second track. So we're gonna grab this one, get that loaded up and ready to go. Even if it's December, we know to deliver, we pull up, you better not freeze. Yeah, it's key on. It's key on. Talk to him. This track is going crazy in the streets right now, people. Crazy. Look up for Keon, your boy up next. And then when you're ready, you just keep up playing. You have a track. Put that crossfade. Woo! This shit hit home right here, folks. Okay. And basically, it's been your boy DJ from the Jerk. You know, I was putting that work, and I'm gonna catch y'all guys for the next show. Deuces. All right, so basically, that was a rundown of mix. If you guys found this video helpful, please go ahead and drop me that like, comment down below anything I could change or any other tutorials you guys like to see. Subscribe to the channel because I'm going to always be dropping them bangers.